Hey everybody, Ryan here. Alright, gonna do my second take on this. Uh, this is the video for all the recap of all games for January 18th, 2021. If you're watching this, thank you for watching. If you are a subscriber, thank you for subscribing. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell to be notified when I drop another video. Which I usually will do two, maybe three a day depending on how the day goes. So... Make sure to hit that notification bell so you can get notified when I drop a new one. Alright, first game, Columbus versus Detroit. So, if you didn't catch it, go check it out. I'll see if I can find a link and I'll post the link in the description. But at 1903 of the third period, there was two fights. Zach Rinsky versus Dylan Larkin and Bobby Ryan versus Oliver Bjorkstrand. Which case, Ryan and Bjorkstrand both got game misconduct because they were a secondary fight. I didn't see anything about a instigator, so that means that nobody's going to get suspended necessarily. So that's good news. All right, on to the game. Oliver Bjorkstrand at 15-11. Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry. Seven minutes into the first, Bobby Ryan's second goal, and I still did not write down who the assist went to, but Bobby Ryan's second goal is a Detroit Red Wing in two games. 15-11 of the second, Oliver Bjorkstrand. First goal of the year from Boone Jenner and Michael Delzato. Delzato's had a good start to his Columbus career. I believe it's two games, three points now. So, good start. Alright, third period, Alexander Texier. Second goal of the year from Oliver Bjorkstrand. At 626 of the third, what would become the game winner. Pierre-Luc Pierre Dubois, first goal and point of the year from Michael Grigorenko and Jonas Corpusalo. Jonas Corpusalo, that's the third goal of the year to have points. To have a point. 1903 of, 1903 of the third period. Wow. Bobby Orion. Bob, wow. Bobby Orion. <laughs> I've seen. They, they've had a lot of videos about Willie O'Ree today, so I think I have the O name for the last name in my head right now. But just so you know, Willie O'Ree, first African American player in the NHL. Go check out all the things. They, they've had a lot of stuff on him and local African-American leaders in the local cities because today is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So go check it out. Very good very good stuff on very, some very good people. So go check it out. 1903 of the third. Bobby Ryan's second goal of the game, third of the season, from Anthony Man Mantha and Philip Aronik. So obviously when they scored that, the fights broke out. So... But, I'll tell you something interesting about Bjorkstrand in a minute. Shots, Detroit had a very good game. They they, uh, they had most of the offensive chances. 37-29 uh, the shots. They definitely were better in the faceoff, 59-41. Uh, power plays, nothing to write home about. 0-1 and 0-2 for the two teams. Penalty minutes, 24-22. That's inflated because of the two game misconducts that they tacked 10 minutes onto the stats for. Uh, hits 11, I'm sorry, 14 11 in favor of Detroit. Blocks 15 11 in favor of Detroit. And giveaways 13 4, Detroit with 13. Uh, Corpus Allo had a great game 35 saves, 946 save percentage. Tomas Grice still looking for that first win with Detroit, but he's still looking good. It's the sad part. It's unfortunate. 26 saves, 897 save percentage. Alright, Oliver Bjorkstrand, first star of the game. Goal, assist, and fight. The first Gordie Howe hat trick of the season. Congratulations. Plus one and 19 minutes, 33 seconds of time on ice. Jonas Corpusalo, 35 for 37 on the shot, shots against. 946 save percentage. Bobby Ryan, two goals, plus one, 1401 time on ice. Nice to see Bobby Ryan doing well. I mean, if he could get somehow find a way to get 30 goals this year, that'd be nice to see for him. Because... He scored 30 goals a year with the Ducks. He went to Ottawa. Not as much, like 15 or a little bit more on average. And unfortunately, he had that prescription pill, I believe it was, uh, addiction last year that he seems to be working through, which is good. So, good on him and good to see him succeeding. All right, on to the next game, Boston versus New York Islanders. This was not a game for the casual fan. One to nothing, the Islanders won. With the winning goal coming 15-51 into the third period, Jean-Gabriel Pajot from Adam Pelich and Ryan Pollock. So, like I said, if you're not a casual fan, this probably would not have been an exciting game for you because 
one goal the entire game. And it's not the only one goal game of the day either. All right, this was a very big goalie day, just to warn everybody. So there aren't many high scores. So just to warn everybody. Shots on goal, Boston had most of the offensive time, 27-17 shots. Face-off, 51-49 in favor of the Islanders. Power plays, it has not been a good power play here so far for a lot of teams. 0 for 3 for Boston, 0 for 5 for the Islanders. Penalty minutes, 12-8, Boston with 12. Hits, 31-26 in favor of the Islanders. Blocks, 17-12 in favor of the Islanders. Giveaways, 10-9, Boston with 10. Tuka Rask, I think he got bored out there, honestly. <laughs> Goalies like Rask, they thrive on nights when they get like 28, 30 shots on net or more. Uh, he only had 17 shots against today. And 16 saves for a 941 save percentage. But I think he got bored. And when you have that low workload, that's when you make little mistakes. And that's probably what happened here. And Varlamov, 27 saves for 1,000 save percentage. It's good to see Varlamov back and healthy because he took that shot from Cal Clutterbuck that went up the plastic shield of him in the neck slash collarbone area. So it's good to know he's okay. First star, Simeon Varlamov, shout out. Jean-Gabriel Pajot, one goal plus one and 20 minutes, 20 seconds of time on ice. Tuka Rask, 16-17, saves shots against and 941 save percentage. All right, on to Winnipeg versus Toronto. Toronto won 3-1, to one, like I said. Goalie matches for today. All right. 528 into his second. John Tavares' third goal. Power play goal from William Nylander and Jake Muzzin. 1839 of the second. Mitch Marner's second from Justin Hole and Austin Matthews. Then Kyle Connor at 1913 of the second would bring it to within one. His second goal of the year from Derek Forbert and Neil Pionk. Third period, 1937, an empty net goal. Mitch Marner's third from Alex Kerfoot. So, truly a 2-1 to one game, but because it's empty netter, 3-1. to one. So, for the goalie, he only allowed two technically. Shots, 38-28 in favor of Toronto. Face-off, 65-35 for, for Toronto. Winnipeg needs to fix that face-off issue. Power play, 0 for 4 for Winnipeg and 1 for 1 for Toronto. They need to work on that power play too, evidently. Our first 1,000, our 100%, uh, fa uh, not face off, well, power play percentage of the year. Yay! Only 1 for 1 though, but still. I'd say next bit would be 5 for 7 for Colorado in that St. Louis game. Alright, penalty minutes, 10 4, Toronto with 10. Hits, 31 25 in favor of Winnipeg. Definitely a physical game. Uh, blocks 11 to 10 in favor of Winnipeg. Giveaways 13 12 with Winnipeg with 13. Hellebuck had 35 saves for 946 save percentage, and Anderson 27 saves for 964 save percentage. Three stars: John Tavares a goal plus one and 16.05 a time on ice. Frederick Anderson 27 for 28 on the shots. Shots against 964 save percentage. Connor Hellebuck 35 for 37. For a 9.46 save percentage. Alright. These are rivals I remember from like the 2000s. Because they were like the top two teams in the, in the conference for quite some time. But Buffalo versus uh, Philadelphia. 6-1 to one Buffalo won. They had a huge game. And honestly I think the Flyers were really missing Sean Couturier in this game. Because he's going to be out for a little while. And that's unfortunate. At least a couple of weeks I think they said. Uh, 1552 of the first, Curtis Lazar, first of the year unassisted. Second period, Buffalo continued the pain. 335 in, Sam Reinhart, first goal of the year, power play goal from Taylor Hall and Jack Eichel. You'll see those two joining together for assists a couple more times. 628 into the second period, Sam Reinhart, second from Jack Eichel and Taylor Hall. 809 into the second, Curtis Lazar's second goal. From Riley Shan, uh, Shan and Brandon Montour. Third period, 1047, Henry Yoki Harju. First goal from Eric Stahl. I honestly forgot that Eric Stahl was on Buffalo. I forgot they traded Marcus Johansson for him, honestly. So I was kind of surprised when I saw him. Like, there's a Stahl on Buffalo? Yep, there he is, Eric Stahl. <laughs> 1849 into the third, Victor Olofsson. Oh, I'm sorry, no. 1755 into the third, 
Nicholas Abe Cabell got his first killing the shutout from Michael Raffle and Travis Sanheim. 1849, Victor Olofsson's second, a power play goal from Taylor Hall and Jack Eichel again. All right. Buffalo dominated this game pretty well. 37-22 shots. Face off 57 for, to 43. I don't know why it says 44. NHL.com failed me on that one. Uh, power plays 2 for 4 for Buffalo, 0 for 1 for Philadelphia. Penalty minutes 8 to 2, Philadelphia with 8. Hits 28 24 in favor of Buffalo. Blocks 17 12 in favor of Buffalo. Giveaways 6 for Buffalo, 11 for Philadelphia. Carter Hutton got 21 saves for a 955 save percentage. Hart had 18 saves, 818 save percentage before he was pulled for Brian Elliott, who had 13 saves for an 847 save percentage. Buffalo can put up numbers like this. They could definitely make the playoffs in this division. I don't know if they could do that against most of these teams, and not normally against Philadelphia either, I have a feeling, but that was just amazing. I mean, they had a heck of a game today. They could definitely make the playoffs. They play like that, that's for sure. We'll see if they do. Uh, Sam Reinhart, first star of the game, two goals, even, and 1838 time on ice. Second star, Curtis Lazar, two goals, plus two, and 12 minutes, 17 seconds of time on ice. Jack Eichel, three assists, even, and 1836 time on ice. All right, on to San Jose versus St. Louis. Now, for the casual fan who likes more high-scoring games, more even back-and-forth games, this was a good game for you. All right, so... First period looked like St. Louis was going to go the same route as they did last game against Colorado, the 8 nothing game. First period, San Jose 11-38 in, Kevin LeBanc from Brent Burns and Logan Couture. 14-18, Logan Couture, power play goal from Tomas Hurdle and Brent Burns. At this point, it's 2-0. I think St. Louis and the back of heads are going, oh crud, we can't do this for five straight periods. Second period, they came back. 236 into the second, Justin Falk from Ivan Barbashev and Carl Gunnarsson. 409, Mike Hoffman, first goal is a St. Louis Blue from Colton Perenko and Tyler Bozak. Then at 1206, San Jose took the lead again. Brent Burns, his first goal of the year, power play goal from Evander Kane, Tomas Hurdle. Then at 19, I'm sorry, at 1417 of the second, Braden Shen, first of the year from Jordan Cairo. 19 minutes into the second, Justin Falk's second goal from David Perron and Ryan O'Reilly to take the lead. And in the third period, 417 into the third, Logan Couture second of the game from Kevin LeBanc and Rodney Shimmick tied the game again. Third period, 1028, Jordan Cairo second of the year from Colton Perenko and Tori Krug. First point as a blue for Tori Krug, by the way. So that was a game winning goal. It was a great back and forth game. From what I saw, it was a very good game because I was flipping between this and the Anaheim game, so I didn't catch all of it, but I kept caught quite a bit. But this one, I mean, you look at the names on San Jose's list. Other than Shimmick, there is absolutely no secondary scoring. This is all their first slash second line or first power play unit. So Burns, three points, though. I mean, that's pretty good for a defender, three points. Logan Couture, three points. Tomas Hurdle, two assists. Um, Vander Kane had an assist. LeBanc, a goal, an assist. Schimmick, an assist. So, I mean, you look at more spread out here. You don't see the same name as often. I mean, Justin Falk, two goals. But, I mean, that, that's the difference for San Jose last year was the lack of depth, especially once those injuries started hitting last year. Just killed them. I mean, they need more from their, from their third and fourth line, honestly. I mean, the shots, 33-26 in favor of St. Louis. Face-offs, 53-47 in favor of San Jose. Power play, 2-3 for three for San Jose. 0-3 for, for St. Louis. Penalty minutes, 6-6, to six, so even there. Hits, 12-8 in favor of St. Louis. Blocks, 10-5 in favor of San Jose. Giveaways, 5-1, San Jose with 5. So, San Jose, I'm sure, is happy about that 5 giveaways. That's a lot less than what they were doing last year. The power play and the penalty kill are still doing great. It's that 5-on-5. Five five. It's killing them again this year already. Devin Dubnik, first start as a Shark. 27 saves, 824 save percentage. Bennington, 22 saves, 846 save percentage. Not a goalie game. 
as you can tell. Stars, Justin Falk, two goals, plus two, and 21-14 at time on ice. Jordan Cairo, a goal and assist, plus two, and 14-21 at time on ice. Logan Couture, two goals and assist, plus one, for seven, and 17-18 time on ice. All right, on to Carolina-Nashville. This one looked like it was going to be a goalie game until the third period, then it just exploded. Nothing in the first period for either team. Second period, 16.05 into the second. Andre Sveshnikov opened the scoring, his third of the year on the power play from Dougie Hamilton and Sebastian Ajo. I forgot to write his assist number. Sorry about that. Uh, 16.51, so less than a minute later. Philip Forsberg tied it, third of the year from Victor Everson and Dante Fabro. Then the third period. Carolina opened it up. 3.46 in, Vincent Trocek, second of the year unassisted. 10.39. Sebastian Ajo, first of the year, from Andre Sveshnikov and Jake Gardner. Then at 1346, Nashville Brad, two within one, Victor Arvidsson from Ryan Johansson and, uh, Arvidsson second, sorry, from Ryan Johansson and Matt Duchesne. 1924, I believe this was an empty matter, Nito Niederreiter, second from Vincent Trocek and Jakob, or Jacob Slavin. All right. It was a good, mostly even game. I mean... It was basically a 3-2 game if you subtract the empty netter, but empty netter still counts goals. It doesn't matter. Shots on goal, 33-24 in favor of Nashville. Face-offs, 67-33 in favor of Nashville. So, Carolina, you need to work on your face-offs, evidently. Power plays, 1-4 for four and 1-5. for five. Um, Penalty minutes, 10-8. Uh, Carolina with 10. Hits, 13-10 in favor of Nashville. Blocks, 17-12 in favor of Nashville. And giveaways were even six each. James Reimer, 31 saves for 939 save percentage for the win. Pekka Rene, 20 saves, 870 save percentage in his first game of the year. Unfortunately, a loss for him. Probably in his last season is my assumption. So, it'd be nice to see him get a little bit more. At least a little bit more offensive support in the game that he plays. Andre Sveshnikov, first star, oops. First star, one goal, one assist. Plus one and 17-12 a time on ice. Victor Arvidsson, one goal, one assist, even, and 16-42 a time on ice. And Philip Forsberg, one goal, even, 18-53 a time on ice. Now on to Minnesota versus Anaheim. This one is the other one nothing game and mostly a boring game. Um, yeah, <laughs> one nothing Anaheim won. So, yay, my team won! Unfortunately, they scored on one goal to win it. I wish they'd score a bit more. But the good news, Max Contois is not the only goal scorer for Anaheim anymore. Three games and three goals for Contois and one for the rest of the team. 409 into the third, Nicholas Delorier, his first year from Kevin Shattenkirk and Carter Rowney. That's all it took. Um, there was a scrum towards the end of the first between Josh Manson and Jordan Greenway. And Josh Manson of Anaheim left the game, or, well, it was last minute, so he went into the back anyways, but did not come back out. Lower body injury, I'm assuming he probably twisted a knee, ankle, or something like that. So, he's out. We'll see how long. Hopefully not too long. So, we'll see how that works out. Shots on goal, 34-27 in favor of Minnesota. Face-offs, 51-49 in favor of Minnesota. Power play, 0-5 for and 0-2. for not a power play game for anybody. Penalty minutes 6 to 12, 12 for Anaheim. Hits 26 to 21 in favor of Anaheim, so there's definitely hitting in this game. Blocks 15 7 in favor of Anaheim. Giveaways 5 2, Anaheim with 5. Cam Talbot of Minnesota, 26 saves, 963 save percentage. And Gibson, 34 saves for the shutout. It's 20th of his career, by the way. And first star, John Gibson. Kevin Shattenkirk, one assist, plus one, and 29.08 of time on ice. Nicholas Delorier, one goal, plus one, and 10 minutes, 11 seconds of time on ice. Shattenkirk, first first point as a duck, by the way. Did I say who the assists were from? Yeah, I did. I, I missed that completely. All right, on to Calgary versus Vancouver, game two. All right, Calgary won this one, too, five to two. Vancouver's not off to a great start, and that first game was good, but they have not won since. All right, Vancouver opened up the scoring, 10-17 into the first. Jake Vertanen from J.T. Miller, 
JT Miller's first game, by the way. First point, too. Uh, nothing else till the second period. Johnny Gaudreau at 12.05 of the second. Second goal of the year from Sean Monaghan. 13.30, Michael Backlund scored from Milan Lucic and Josh Levo. Is it Levo or Levo? Levo. Uh, Milan Lucic. Hey, he got a point. Hooray! Then, those always killer goals. 19.58 in the second. Elias Lindholm's second goal of the year. Power play goal from Johnny Gaudreau. Those ones always hurt two seconds before the end of the period. Ouch. All right, 640 of the third. Mark Giordano, first of the year, power play goal, unassisted. 1315, Tyler Myers got his first of the year, a shorthanded goal, too. Not exactly the person I'd pick for a shorthanded goal, but, hey, if you can make that bet and you win it, that's a lot of money you're going to win right there. 1905, empty net goal, Rasmus Anderson's first from Sean Monahan. Fairly even game, but Calgary got the better chances, obviously. 32-27 in favor of Calgary, the shots. Face-offs, 53-47 in favor, in favor of Calgary. Power play, 0 for 4 for Vancouver. 2 for 7 for Calgary. Not a great percentage, but they still have two power play goals. Penalty minutes, 14-8, 14, 14 for Vancouver. Hits, 14-10 in favor of Vancouver. Blocks, 12-8 to 8 in favor of Vancouver. Giveaways, 9-17. to 17. The 17 was for Calgary. The winning team had 17 giveaways. You are lucky that Markstrom had a great game again. So now Markstrom, two games against his former team from last year, Vancouver, has allowed two goals in two games. Not a great percentage for Vancouver. Uh, Demko had the start today, 27 saves, 871 save percentage. Markstrom, 25 saves, 926 save percentage. Johnny Goudreau, one goal and an assist, plus one in 19 minutes, 29 seconds. A time on ice to be the first star. Second star, Elias Lindholm, one goal, minus one, and 24 minutes, 33 seconds of time on ice. And number three star, Jakob Markstrom, 25 for 27, and at 926 save percentage. All right, Montreal, Edmonton. For some reason, I don't know what it is with the Montreal games, but they don't post the three stars, so I made my own three stars at the end just like now. Montreal won this game again, 3-1. to one. They beat Edmonton again. Second straight game they've held McDavid to nothing, pretty much. Actually, literally nothing in this game. But Habs fans are going to be excited. 9.54 into the first. Alexander Romanov's first goal of his career for them from Brett Kulak and Paul Byron. That's exciting, seeing Alexander Romanov score that goal because I know they've been waiting for Romanov. He's arrived, has that first goal finally. Then second period, Shea Weber, 1949 of the second. 11 seconds left in the period. Weber gets his, gets his first power play goal from Nick Suzuki and Tyler Toffoli. I believe that's Toffoli's first point as a hab. Nick Suzuki, by the way, uh, at the last video that I had them playing, I misspelled his last name. Sorry about that. That is the correct spelling right there. All right, third period, 15-12 in, Arturi Lekkinen, first goal of the year, shorthanded goal from Jeff Petrie. Jeff Petrie's done really well against his former team Edmonton in these two games. All right, then Edmonton decided to kill the uh, shutout for Jake Allen in his first start as a Montreal Canadian. 17:51 into the third, Devin Shore a goal, short-handed goal. Good to see Devin Shore get a goal. I, I felt bad. I thought he was miss. I thought he wasn't used correctly with Anaheim personally, but it is what it is. I'm glad to see he's scoring it. That he's got a goal at least. All right, shots 34-26 in favor of Montreal. Face-offs 56-44 in favor of Edmonton. Power play 1 for 5 for Montreal and 0 for 7 for Edmonton. How do you give Edmonton 7 power plays and they get nothing? How often is that going to happen? Rarely. Penalty minutes 14-10, Montreal 14. Hits 31-17 in favor of Montreal. So Montreal is throwing the body tonight. Blocks 13-9 in favor of Edmonton. Giveaways 8-3, Edmonton with 8. Jake Allen, like I said, first start as a Montreal Canadian. 25 saves, 962 save percentage. That He right there, if he plays like that every time they start him, it will give Carey Price the rest he needs. That he's going to be a beast come playoff times. Come playoff time. So I'm sure Carey Price is excited to have him as the backup. And then Koskinen, 31 saves for 912 save percentage. 
Jake Allen, 25 for 26 with 962 save percentage. He's your first star. Second, like I said, I made these myself. Jake Allen is my first star, in my opinion. Alexander Romanov, first goal of his career, plus one and in 17 minutes, 43 seconds of time on ice. Number two star. Number three, Shea Weber, one goal, minus one, and 24 minutes, 55 seconds of time on ice. So, those were the three stars I saw. So, that's how it went. Uh, Phoenix versus Vegas, the last game of the day. Vegas won this one 4-2, even though in the second period they trailed 2-0. They came back for the third straight game. Oh, wait, is it third? No, second straight. They technically were tied and took the lead in the first game. But second straight comeback victory. All right. The scoring was opened up. Tyler Pitlick, 8-24 into the first. A shorthanded goal, unassisted. Second period, Nick Schmaltz made it 2 nothing on his first of the year power play goal from Jacob Chitrin, or Chikrin, sorry, and Derek Broussard. Derek Broussard's had a decent start for Arizona, not going to lie. I mean, has, he's had a good start, same as Chikrin. I think they're really missing Ekman Larson, though. I mean, it, it was a good game for them even without Ekman Larson, but I think they're going to miss him the longer he's out. Uh, second period for Vegas, they brought it within one towards the end of the period. 1702, Max Petre's third from Chandler Stevenson and Shea Theodore. Or Theodore, however you want to go with it. I, I've always had Theodore personally, so I'm going to go with Theodore. Third period, 411 into the third. Riley Smith ties it from William Carlson. 812 into the third. Vegas takes the lead. Chandler Stevenson's first from Zach Whitecloud and Mark Stone. Then empty net goal at 19:48. Riley Smith's second of the game and the year. All right, Arizona had a really good game, honestly, even without Ekman Larson. They had 33 shots to Vegas's 28. Faceoffs 51-49 in favor of Arizona. Power play one for five for Arizona, 0 for five for Vegas. Penalty minutes 10 to 10, even split there. Hits 30 to 21 in favor of Arizona. Blocks 19-13 in favor of Vegas. And giveaways five to four, Vegas with five. Darcy Kemper, twenty four saves, eight eight nine save percentage, and Robin Leonard, thirty one saves for nine thirty nine save percentage. Now Vegas, to me, they've played two games against Anaheim and one against Arizona now, and it seems like their shots have not they they have been kind of out of sync to start the season. Even though they've won all three games, they've won. That's all that really matters. But it just seems like they're really slow to start games other than that first game against Anaheim, of course. But the last two games, they seem to have been lacking. And hopefully they can fix that because they should be top of that division as they are right now. But they should stay there all year. But if they keep doing that, they aren't going to stay there long. All right, Riley Smith, two goals, plus two, and 20 minutes, 16 seconds of time on ice for first star. Sorry, my watch alarm was going off there. Second star, Max Pacioretty, one goal, plus one, and 17.55 at time on ice. William Carlson, one assist, plus one, and 21.32 at time on ice. So they still play that pseudo first line of Carlson, Smith, and Marcheseau. Marcheseau. A lot more than the other lines, like Pacioretty, even though he has more points than a lot of those guys, or more goals than a lot of those guys. Mark Stone has more points, but they're playing a little bit less. But Stone, I think, is playing more than Pacioretty because he... Is more of a two-way forward. All right, so that's all your games for today. Like I said at the beginning of the video, thank you for watching. And if you're a subscriber, thank you for subscribing. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Be notified when I drop the next video, which should be a news of the day video tomorrow. And other than that, make sure to like, comment, and share. And other than that, I will see you all next video. Bye, everybody. Oh, bye again, everybody.